Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Magic the Gambling and how Magic has become more and more about gambling since I've been playing. So go back to beta. Beta, no one knew what the prices were. Black Lotus at the most expensive card was $20. So there was a limited market for people to sell cards. eBay, I don't know if eBay was around, but I used this Yahoo stuff. It was like Yahoo's version of eBay, which no one ever bid on, so that was great. So if someone listed it for a good price, you would win the auction. Now, when you got into Inquest Magazine, that was how most of my friends in elementary and middle school got prices, and the prices in Inquest were so ridiculously not correct, mainly because it came once a month. So imagine if the prices that you got in the beginning of the month were the same prices that you were using at the end of the month today with all these spikes and speculation going on, you would say, hmm, that would put you at a disadvantage. We also didn't really have smartphones. Even during Zendikar, original Zendikar, people didn't have smartphones. Or if they had smartphones, the data was either too slow or too expensive to really use it for magic, right? So... During Zendikar, there was still a lot of, quote, sharking because prices were just unknown. As knowledge became more and more available and everyone had a smartphone, Wizard of the Coast decided to make this about gambling. The first big step towards gambling was the Mythic. I remember sitting there and saying, hmm, that's interesting. We have, like, a Mythic. And in... in in Yurasa and other card games I was playing at the time, Mythics were very, I mean, in Japanese games, they are pretty common. You know, like specialties that come once a case or you're guaranteed one a case. So I was like, oh, okay, this is not that big of a deal. But what happened was all the good cards, like Bane Angel, the Planeswalkers, pretty much any card that you really wanted to play, JC Mind Sculptor, was a Mythic. This was to get you to open more packs because you needed to get your Mythic. And unfortunately, a lot of the anime games like Inuyasha, the cards that are really rare are like autographed or they have special artwork. So they're not actually good cards that you need to play with them. Sometimes they are, but that is not common. But Magic the Gathering, JSD Mind Sculptor hit over $100. And that was a lot of money for one card at the time. And I remember saying to myself, okay, so they have done something that's different from these other games I'm playing, uh, Inuyasha TCG being number one, because in those games, the mythics are just really nice artwork of cards that are not mythic. In this game, the mythics are really good cards that you need to put in your deck, and there's no other way to play them. There's no other less mythic version of them. So that was the difference, and I knew from that point on, Magic would continue its gambling habits. So we added Mythic, then we went into the Masterpiece. So the next step was the Masterpiece. Also, Channel is about $0.29. Cents. You can probably get for less than $0.10 cents a 4th edition Channel. This is a lot of copies of it. Yes, it doesn't have the beautiful artwork, but I would argue that this artwork is actually more iconic than the more beautiful piece of artwork. And for something like Iconic Masters, it might actually make more sense to use the original artwork for Channel Fireball. So back to the story of the expeditions. I have a friend, um, or a person I met in a store one time. His name is Steven. And Steven is, and many people like Steven, uh, you can see the channel for Battle for Zendikar. He bought 10 cases of it this is a person who normally buys a box, but he was so hyped for Battle for Zendikar and the masterpieces, which we I could have assumed would never be there would never be more masterpieces. This was the one time secret treasured, just like original Zendikar. Zendikar was itself quite quite weak, so I assume that this was kind of to balance out the low expected value. Lo and behold there were more masterpieces. And the masterpieces drained people of their wallet, not because of the actual masterpiece itself. 
because people wanted to open the masterpiece. People wanted to get hyper lucky. It's winning a lottery ticket, right? It's not the lottery ticket that gets you a hundred million dollars. It's a lottery ticket that gets you a hundred dollars. And people like that. So it's paying five dollars for a lottery ticket, or in this case, four dollars for a lottery ticket that can get you fifty to a hundred dollars in more magic cards. Which then you can spend on more lottery tickets, which are booster packs. Now go to so there's two things every lottery good lottery does one you have a very high reward for the cost two you increase the cost and you increase the reward but there's also channel so let's explain why this is important why is the cost increase to ten dollars so important because now you are used to it Remember, Modern Masters 1 was not $10. I think it was $6.99 a pack. And people said, oh, wow, $6.99 pack. Then they inflated it to $10. And Wizard of the Coast knew where to put the other Modern Masters at and also the Legacy Eternal Masters and any other Masters that follow will be $10. Did printing the cardboard cost more money? No. Did the creative team cost more money? I would argue in many instances they cost less because they're just reprinting the same cards, so they're not developing new cards. So I would argue that the development team should cost less money for an iconic master set. Did the art team cost more money? I would argue no, because instead of making artwork for a new Egyptian set, they're just copying and pasting. Some cards will have new artwork. What Wizard of Coast understood, and this is why Rishon Port is not in this set, but it will be in the 25th anniversary set, I am almost certain of. The reason that Rishon Port is not in place of Channel is because they understood the market. They finally got it. Why give the secondary market over to vendors when you, Wizard of Coast, should be the person controlling it? How do I know this is happening? Well, in baseball cards, football cards, blah, blah, blah cards, they have something called buybacks. And a buyback is when you, and this is like the most popular product in sports cards right now. I collect sports cards. I like to join breaks and it's a lot of fun. And I'm just like, you know, talking smack about teams. And the biggest products right now are when people buy old cards, like autographs or gold cards. Or, this is all types of promotionals. And then they repackage it and then they sell it to you. In this case, they don't need to do that because they don't need to reprint. the Reprinting an autograph is kind of hard, right? Like a rookie card is supposed to be one of those. But Wizard of the Coast has a severe advantage over the sports market because they don't need to worry about autographs. They don't need to worry about the value of a uh, first year card. They can just reprint as much as they want whenever they want. Now, they cannot stop milking the cow. If the cow goes dry, then everyone's screwed. So that's why we have channel. There is no bigger gap between a 20 cent card and a $200 card. And yet, here we, here we are. Both are mythics. You have an equal chance to get either one. Hmm. That sounds like gambling to me. And people will buy packs in hopes of getting Mana Drain or Grove of the Burn Willows or Afer Vial or any of the other numerous cards over 20 cents. And they will be crushed when their box contains Channel. At the same time, luckily the rares are actually where most of the value is so even if you hit on a channel it's still possible for you to recover there's still that hope you always want to give gamblers hope if you take away the hope they won't gamble anymore they'll just be depressed but you always want to give them hope to open the next pack do i disagree with this no this is the way it always should have been this is the way it should have been I don't know why they wish the coast let the secondary market get out of control when they could charge ten dollars a pack and make four products a year and just call it masters, master this, master that, master this, master that. And that's what they're doing. Because the customer base is used to ten dollar packs. You you have already accepted it. How do I know? Because of 
because you're buying the product and the product is selling well and they're continuing to make more of it. If it flopped, they would stop making it. This is a huge margin price. Again, no team, no art team for the most part, no development team to create new cards and mechanics, no team that really needs to do very much. I mean, most of the team, all, all the team has to do is create a expected value, which is about 150% of the box value, and then it will depress to about 70 or 80%. Every set has pretty much done that. And then eventually, once supply runs out, it'll go up more. So, man, it really is a gamble. Bye, guys.